I think what inspired me was really just being artistically inclined as a kid and, and know where to really put that artistic talent or creativity. And I think rap, when the hip hop scene first started kind of blowing up in the 80s, I was at that point looking for something. I love the, at the time was counterculture. It's, it's pretty uh, crazy to, that hip hop is so mainstream nowadays, but back then it was like counterculture. And through the music and through the album covers, I would see this artwork in the background. And once I figured out it, that it was graffiti, I instantly connected to it. And that's kind of what got me started into doing it. How long have I put work? Um, that's a crazy question. I mean, I've been doing it since 1984. I started drawing it and sketching it in 1985. I actually started going out in the street and doing it. Uh, I'm still doing it now. I, I, I can't say that I, I'm doing uh, anything really too illegal nowadays. I, I'm, you know, I, I have uh, rent to pay and I got, I got responsibilities, so I can't really afford to get popped right now. But, um, you know, I, I like all aspects of, of what graffiti is and what it can do. But I've been doing it since 85, do the math, I don't know. More than half my life at this point. You know, I, I'm going to have to revert that answer back to something that Cope too said um, and, and pretty much what he said and I feel the same way. It's, it doesn't really matter what you have to work with. If you're a creative artist, if you're a creative artist, you can use any brand, you can use any brand of paint, you can use any tip. That shouldn't really matter. It shouldn't really set you back and say, oh, you know what, my piece sucks because I only had this paint or I didn't have those tips. A lot of times it's a poor craftsman who blames his tools. So you should really be able to do anything with, with any product. So anyhow, it, it shouldn't really matter what you have, but if you're asking me for my personal preference, I mean, I tend to lean over to the 94 by MTN and I use just the stock, top, the stock tip that comes with it. Or I'm actually an old school guy, so I like the old school NY fats and the old school in white thins. Um, those are my classic tips and that's what I started using back in the days and I still like the feel of those. You know, I, I think right now, the reason that there's probably people would perceive people hating or so many people hating, I think that there's so, there's so, there's so, there's so much of a variety of things you can do on the street and sometimes when someone has a really unique skill or they have a new, unique style, whether it's good or not, people will start to hate on that, either because they feel that the, the style they're, they're, the other person's producing is better than theirs, or they start hating because they think that the style the other person's producing is, is weaker than them. Um, I think that what people need to do is just chill. I mean, the, the, there's, so many, there's so many walls, there's so many things you can do with them you don't really have time to hate. If you have enough time to hate, that means you don't have, you're not doing enough on your own. You're not doing enough on the street. You need to stop wasting your time hating and start spending your time creating. Damn, I'm gonna quote that right there. Don't hate, create. <laughs> a, a burner is above a piece. You kind of have this hierarchy. You have your tag, which is a really quick, just simple tag. Uh, from there you go up to a bomb, which is a really quick fill-in, one maybe outline on it, super fast. Then you have a throw-up, which is a little more involved. You have a quick outline with a fill-in, maybe a 3D or a highlight. Uh, so you have a tag, a bomb, a throw-up, a piece, which is what you normally see. Then you have uh, uh, the masterpiece or the burner, which is the big full-on production with the 3D and, and you know the cloud and the background and characters. It's pretty much a, a masterpiece, that's what a burner is. You know, I think Iron Lock smells dangerously good and I would put the emphasis on dangerously. Like, man, like, I, you know, that, that stuff, every time I smell it, I feel like my brain's melting. But, you know, I, I think that obviously it's, it's a chemical, uh, it's, it's something chemically in the, in the paint that makes the fragrance. So, I don't know why it smells like that, but I tell you right now, if you're smelling paint, you should use a respirator. I thought it was cool not to wear a respirator back in the days, but man, I'm getting old. You need to wear a respirator, so you shouldn't have to worry about how dangerously good it smells. I 
I say, you know, to get to get recognized as a legitimate artist nowadays. Uh, I mean, nowadays I I think it sucks because, you know, the internet is so easy to use. I mean, you can paint something, you know, right here in the it, something really small, whatever, and then you can just blast it everywhere on the internet, and and you know you can get really famous really quick overnight. But I think uh, my advice is just to keep creating. Um, don't wait for. Don't go out of your way to try to become famous. If you're in the game to become famous, then you're in it for the wrong reasons. You should be in it for, for the love of, of the creativity. So just create every day, something different every day. Just create, 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 and eventually, it might not happen overnight, but you will become popular, famous, and people will love you. Aerosol Warfare kind of evolved. When we first started doing what we were doing, it was my, myself and Merge 360, and we started doing graffiti in 84, 85, 86, 87. Um, and, and between 19, the late 80s and the mid 90s, we started to go out and film ourselves. Back in the days when, when the, it was you know, before the flip and before the little handheld things, it was this big thing you carried on your shoulder with a bag that hung onto the side, and we'd go out and film ourselves. And we started to kind of edit these videos of us painting and eventually we started to make these edits from footage from all over the world and the tape was called aerosol warfare and that was like early to mid 90s and um long story short we started selling these tapes as aerosol warfare but we were our original crew name was the underground productions that's that's kind of a trivia question right there you might win a million dollars one day for answering that one but so we were underground productions producing aerosol warfare but at a certain point the video got way bigger than we were so people would refer to us as, oh, those are those aerosol warfare guys. And so at some point we figured we'd be really stupid to not adopt the name of the video as our crew name. So aerosol warfare actually was a video magazine that came out quarterly, um, that, but then kind of evolved into the crew. Of course you can, you just won't get paid. Okay, no, for real. We always have opportunities for people that want to kind of be associated with what we're doing. If you check out our website or our Facebook or our Twitter or Instagram or all those crazy units that people use nowadays to communicate, uh, you can call, you can email, whatever. Um, anyhow, we, but we do have opportunities to be a part of group exhibitions. We always have um, call outs for volunteers. So, you know, if you want to be down with what we're doing, uh, just it's out there, just uh, you got to look for it. Well, you know, it's funny, I, I've been going by Gonzo247 uh, for more than half my life, so that's kind of become my name. Um, you know, I get, I get paid via Gonzo247. Uh, if you really want to know my real name, just do a Google search, it might show up. If it shows up, bam, you're gravy. I do have children, I have 247 of them. I'm just kidding. No, actually, you know, I, uh, you know, every, every time I touch a can, it becomes my baby. So in a sense, I have a million babies floating around. And every piece that I touch, every wall that I touch, I leave a little bit of myself there. So I do have my children all over the place. As far as physical children, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll get back with you in nine months. <laughs> I do have siblings, I actually have three sisters, so if you can imagine I was raised in a house with a bunch of girls, which is crazy. The craziest part was sharing a restroom with three girls, I mean talking about like makeups and hair brushes and hair dryers, and not, they, all, they didn't share, they, had, they each had their own hair dryers and er, curling irons and uh, all kind of crazy things that you probably don't even want to think about. So imagine this dude that walks in and then this is madness. The first thing I did when I got my own place is like I'm going to keep my restroom clean. And the worst thing about it is when you have three sisters and you go to shave and you find your razor in the shower, that's nasty. Man, that's a good question. You know, I, I, I tend to, to stick with the oddball colors. I don't really necessarily have a favorite color, but what I like are secondary or, or, or the almost like the bastard children colors that no one really uses. It's like, you know, you have your yellow, you have your blue, you have your green, but then you have your kind of your, then you have kind of your turquoise, you know, and then you can break it down from there. So like four tiers down, I like those color ranges because they're, you don't really see them too often and I, I think that they get overlooked. You 
You know, um, if I had a brain, it probably wouldn't slow down. But I, would, I, I you know, I had this crazy accident when I was young, and they actually put a, a, a computer in my head. It's called ENIAC. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, I, I, I would like to say that, it, that I, I take breaks, but you know, back in the days I was 24/7. That's where the number came from because I was constantly just thinking of new things. I have slowed down a bit just because I, I'm at a point in my life where I want to really just chill and enjoy my life versus just going on to the next project and the next project. So um, it actually took a, a lot for me to learn that sometimes you got to slow down um, to ensure that the quality of the work goes up. Man, that's like, that's like saying who would win if you had King Kong versus Godzilla, man. They're both like monsters in the industry, you know? So it doesn't really matter who's going to win, just enjoy the fight.